You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. And now get ready to hit the auction block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for your bi-weekly source for all things options related. Yes, it is time for the option block with the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging, at least we hope so, Options Insider Radio Network. If I sound back to normal, it's because I'm back in the old Shy town studio. I enjoyed our sojourn to the Southern studio. Always fun down there. Pretty nice weather down there. Actually, weirdly enough, it was warmer in Chicago when we got back yesterday than it was when we left the Southern studio. So weird things afoot. It's that time of year, listeners. Weather is in flux. So Things should be back to normal on that front. You should be hearing me loud and clear and all sorts of fun to be had there. Speaking of fun, of course, you know where to get all the fun here. If you're just listening to the Option Block first, make sure you, you upgrade to the full network wherever you're getting this. It's available on just about every audio platform under the sun and some video platforms like YouTube. You can go listen to it there if you want as well. Of course, get the full network Option Insider Radio Network. Then if you like what you hear, throw some stars our way. It does help new folks continue. I mean, look. Just set a record for volume last month. There's new people discovering options literally every second. That means they're discovering the network all the time as well. If you want to help that process, throw some stars our way. This show or the full network, wherever you feel. You can even throw it on our app in the App Store. Whatever and wherever the spirit moves you out there. And of course, if the spirit moves you to go above and beyond, who can blame you? These markets are crazy. TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro is the place to go. And I always lead with the pro Q&As because, hey, they're awesome. And we've had a litany of the best guests, the best minds in the world of options come through to answer your questions. But I don't talk about options oddities that much. It's kind of the unsung gem there on the pro side. But it's awesome. And if you listen to that show and you can't find something to trade or something that intrigues you and makes you say, hmm, makes you investigate further, and probably makes you some money, or at least prevents you from losing a bunch of money, then you're doing it wrong. Check it out. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. And since I'm talking about options oddities, I should kick things off with my compatriot on that program, the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from optionpit.com. Mr. G, how go things in the land of Maine? I'm surprised you're able to join us today. You're not out there meteorite hunting like the rest of Maine. <laughs> I believe that was in the northern part of the state. Oh, you know, it's, I, it's I all a, Maine to me. 
<laughs> it, is, it is all made to you. Although I did go spring skiing on Monday. So that was a, that was a nice surprise. Um, in Western Maine, they still had lots of snow, which in, and like here, there's no snow, but, uh, just, uh, you know, travel to uh, about two hours and 20 minutes Northwest and boom, they are chock full of snow. So, uh, but spring is springing here and I I'm just surprised I got put on, I got put on first. I'm, I'm, I might, my, my heart is touched that I got first on the rotation this one today. Look at all the love heading your way. If I were you, I would grab my shotgun. I'd go out meteorite hunting. Sound like there's a nice bounty on that meteorite. If you come down with it. So you get some nice, cold, I, hard I, I know there is real money there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after you're done talking to us, grab that shotgun you have for the for the clam pirates and go look for that meteor. You don't want anyone taking your bounty once you find it. You know, you need the shotgun for that. Those, <laughs> those main meteorite hunters, we know they're a hardcore group. You don't want to mess around with them. And then let's move away from the hardcore folks to the land where everyone is nice and pleasant and tranquil. And they head out to their local Costco and they have a good time out there. It is, of course, St. Charles, where we are joined by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud. From St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show, sir. I actually can say I've been to your Costco out there, and a very nice Costco it is. Well, thank you. I was just there last night. They had uh, like an end of, so a couple of end of season long sleeve shirt deals. So I grabbed me a couple of long sleeve shirts at Costco last night. <laughs> yeah, I was out in that area and I was like, man, I need some gas. What are the chances there's a Costco near me? And sure enough, there was one like a hundred yards away. So there you go. St. Charles, the land of bounty, keeps on giving out there. And I don't know where he's joining us from this week. He's always hither and yon, all about the country, holding down the SIBO hot seat this week. Our old buddy, Henry, a.k.a. the Flowmaster Schwartz, beaming in from the land of SIBO. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. And where are you beaming in from this week? Maybe you're meteorite hunting up in Maine. Thanks, Mark. And, and hi, everybody. Uh, I'm in upstate New York today, but meteorite hunting actually sounds totally cool. We get metal detectors. And we can go out into like the fields and maybe we find some meteorites or we find like some old like Civil War bullets or something. <laughs> that, that, that's probably more fun than trading today because there is nothing going on out there. That'd be an impressive Civil War battle up in Maine. I, I, don't, I don't know how many battles raged uh, on the shores of Maine back in the summer. Maybe some unsung clashes took place up there as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And as the Flowmaster says, maybe you could be excused if you want to maybe take a break from trading and go see if you can hunt some meteors. There's cold, hard cash there. Not sure how much cold, hard cash there is to be found in the market today, but I guess it kind of depends where you're looking. It's not like we're not moving today. We're moving a bit. Uh, the S&P up about almost 0.9%, so almost a full percent. We actually are, shocking to say, a little bit north of the 4,100 level that has been just a magnet for the better part of the last few weeks. In fact, if past is prologue, we are pretty much due right now for the rubber band to snap and pull us back in the other direction right back down uh, to 4,100. But we're hanging out close to 4,130 right now. Dow up about three quarters of a percent. NASDAQ feeling a little bit of juice today up about... 1.6% out there. So we are moving a little bit out there. Markets looking green for our final OB, at least here, of the old week. A VIX with all this green on the screen. I mean, VIX is just, just taking a vacation itself. It's at threatening to break the 18 handle, actually. It was at about an 18.10 when we kicked off the show. It puts it down a little over a point, about 1.1 points from where it was this time last week. And we've got VVIX at about an 83, down about three points from where we were last week, I should been so long that i've been in the studio it feels like months <laughs> actually just from monday's show vvx 83 down about three points from where we were on monday uh, vxx 4130 down nearly two points 1.9 points that's why i said i know i said before on ball views i kind of washed my hands of vxx it's a crappy broken product and i still maintain a lot of that but these movements are actually pretty impressive it goes to show what a nice reverse split a real reverse split not to 20 but to 50 or above, what that can do for a product in terms of reigniting and recapturing the imagination, at least of traders out there. So VXX, I might have to start paying attention to that one again, which I, I, I hate to say that out loud, but look at these moves down two points again, just from Monday's show. So if you're looking for that old downside fun trade that I know a lot of you like in the mall space, VXX starting to, starting to light up the old tape again. UVXY, this one... <laughs> Forget about it. 410 
down a quarter of a point. I mean, this thing, are they going to reverse split this thing? This thing is just, it's circling the drain now. $4? I don't know. It's, uh, it's lost a lot of its luster. SVIC, 1790, up three quarters of a point. Of course, that's our inverse friend. Uh, UVIX, 1340, going the other direction, down 1.1 points as well this week and then, or I should say today. And then Vol Q, 2165, down one point. So a lot of the Vol getting squeezed off the top. VIX back down to a frothy but a more manageable level. Uh, let's start this week. Let's go out. Let's go. I'll tell you what. Let's go in the order that we started the show. Let's go out first to the meteorite hunter extraordinaire, the Rock Lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, while you're on the hunt, what is catching your eye out there in the markets today? Well, I have to put those hot meteorites down. You know, they, they come through they are, space. They are very hot. I heard this one. This one is so big, it, it made a sonic boom over Maine. Oh, really? <laughs> it must have scared you because you're not used to modern technological noises in Maine. I, I guess not. Yeah, I was. Uh, I just thought it was a moose call, basically. Just I was just going moose call with that one. Um, <laughs> and those mo- those mooses are big. Um, and, I, and I like the farther north and west you go in Maine. There's more signs that said moose crossing. Be careful when you're driving. I have seen a moose, moose up- for the next seven miles. I have seen a moose <laughs> moose up close in Canada, and I immediately regretted it. I was like, this thing is uh, this thing is is a beast. <laughs> this thing is, is, is a large. force, a literal force of nature. This thing. Yes, like I, you're in a car, and even if that moose wanted to somehow just just move your car, oh, around, forget about it, it. forget no about trouble. it. I, I was very yeah. thankful it did not have teeth and claws at that moment because that thing would be the terror of the planet. <laughs> um, well, I think we well we have a couple of interesting uh, things. So, and I, I'm curious about Tusa says about that. I'll I'll save the silver and gold for him because I know he'll want to comment about it. Um, but. Uh, you have, I mean, vol's low of the year. I mean, when when the Fed does the QE thing, it's it, it's so ridiculous now. To be quite honest, I don't even know what. So did they avert another crisis? So, and by the way, I get ex- extending credit to keep problems from getting worse. Um, you know, and and now all of a sudden, you know, they're going to buy their bonds back. Are they going to buy them back at full value? Or are they gonna buy, like, I'm not quite sure how all that worked. It, uh, with whatever they did, maybe Henry knows a little better. But ever since that, I mean, look at a chart of the day the Fed said, okay, we're going to just create this discount window and people can swap asset for cash whenever they want. Um, basically, just again, a- avoiding the market mechanism once again. Um, and gold, gold, silver, gold miners, I mean, the, the chart is straight freaking up. Um, and here we are, like 4130 or whatever, SPX. Uh, and that's, you know, this is our area where, uh, and, and tech really has pulled us up there. I mean, Apple is up and Microsoft and also tech has pulled the SPX up because um, the banks still haven't come back. And I guess we'll hear about with JP Morgan, but like, but vol is low. I mean, SPX realized vol is 10%. That is not very high. Um Actually, today is a fairly big move, uh, relatively speaking, for SBX in a while. But, uh, you know, 10-day volatility is 11%, 20-day vol is 14, 30-day vol is 16, 60-day vol is 16. So, and so VIX at uh, so at the money SPX 30 days out is uh, just uh, right around 16%. So, uh, and all the shorter vol, all the shorter term vols are like 14, 13% like you know nine days and in so the market is not looking for a whole lot of movement here we're looking for some earnings that i'm sure they've probably already you know and we have a low vol and it's not going to surprise me to see a 17 handle uh you know into the weekend and it's like uh the fed weighs it's one again and problems are averted for another year <laughs> until until i don't know when so but um, and it's almost time again for um, the massive VIX purchase because uh, Vol of Vol there is is once again like it's almost at that same level it was a month ago. It's not quite there yet, but it is. It's literally four Vol points away from the lows it was last month for the May cycle. Um, so I'm probably going to do the exact same. I'm just I'm finally actually selling my puts out when I bought those strangles. Um, I just started selling them this week because they're they're about what I paid for them, which is quite a, a you know it's amazing to be honest. But 
but that's what it is. So um, it is it is shocking, but not totally surprising. Um, but you can buy again. You could buy options that are pretty, you know, well in the money at this point for not a lot of money. Um, the May the May twenty five call in VIX is ninety eight cents. Now I know that's seven dollars out of the money to cash, uh, and, but it, maybe we're trading what twenty two twenty two VIX. So VIX futures are twenty. But again, really really inexpensive. Um, so those cheap call spreads and puts. I'm going to do the same thing again uh, either today or tomorrow, um, just because that's where vol is. It's just ridiculously low. So. Um, but I'm more curious to see what Tucson has to say about silver and gold. Cause I know he wants to say something. All right. He has been invoked. So the uncleist of Mike's are, yeah, you know, it, it's been a recurring theme. Spoiler alert. I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later today. The, uh, the appetite for some upside in gold, at least on the options front it is apparently endless. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now and uh, there are apparently more to come. So yeah, this is, this is crazy Tom, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, you have been invoked. What are your thoughts on today's markets and also what's going on in the land of the shiny stuff? Well, let's talk about the shiny stuff first. And that um, just looking at SLV, we're up to levels right now, similar to where we were uh, about a year ago. And so if you just look at a chart of silver from uh, roughly a month ago, it's straight up. I mean, if you're just looking at SLV, it's going from the low 18s to the high 23s. That's a pretty big move, no doubt about that. Um, it was funny. I was just talking with a client early, right before this call, actually, right before the show on our um, just a quarterly. And I'm like, well, you know, sit down for this. Uh, silver's actually up. And so he's like, yeah, I saw that. Um, so it's been different, to say the least. But we need to get through, from a technical standpoint, we still need to get through some levels a little bit above here uh, from roughly a year ago. And then the next top at silver that I can see over the course of the last three years is around the mid to upper 27s, looking at SLV, of course. And I know that's still a long way to go from a percent standpoint, but for those of you that listened to this show when it first began in 20, 2011, around that era, 2010, 2011, uh, it just seemed like every day the silver would have a 5% move one way or another. And um, if we get to that, silver is something unique in that it comes like a thief in the night, in that it will bore you to death for years and years and years. Just ask Mark Longo about all my silver promises of lots of action and silver that I never delivered on uh, from my collar strategy that back when silver moved a lot, I thought would be great, but then it just became boring. Um, but then all of a sudden, silver often comes like a thief in the night. And if you look historically at silver uh, for what it did um, in um, going back here to April of 2011, SLV peaked out at $48. And then if you just look at a 20-year chart of it, it's been a very boring ride ever since. Uh, but if we get that, if you watch how fast silver actually went, uh, I'm going from just picking something random, July of 2010, silver was at mid-17s. And then in April of 2011, uh, roughly nine months later, it goes up to $48. And so that's the thief in the night. And historically, silver has had other movements like that as well. Uh, so be on the lookout for it. It might come, it might not, you never know. But um, it's definitely fun to look at because if we are heading into continued inflation or this is a delayed reaction to the inflation with which it's already happened uh, happened then silver could be doing something very interesting in the near future um the way with which we're positioned on it is that um we have a risk reversal on i can't give you the exact strikes my compliance doesn't approve of such things but um we really have a very limited risk position because silver, the calls are typically more expensive than the puts. Uh, so we have it set up in such a way with the risk reversal uh, to have unlimited upside, but we do have some downside on it, but it's pretty low risk and pretty hedged pretty well. Uh, but if it breaks through that, this is going to be a 
very, there's going to be a whole lot of grinning going on, mostly by me uh, and my clients that are in it. Now, will it happen? Will it won't? Who knows? But it's something to where it's a low risk, high reward type of setup with which how we have it set up. Now, in terms of other things that we have going on in the market at this point, um, with the sectors, technology, consumer discretionaries are driving the market up today. Uh, XLY up 1.6, 1.7%. Uh, technology is up 1.4% looking at XLK. Um, so we do have that happening. And then in terms of some individual names, Apple, uh, Apple's up 2.6% on the day. Good gosh, Mark, this does feel like a 2011 show. I'm talking about how Apple and silver are up on the day. This is like the good old days. Um, and um, so we have that happening. And I think just with yesterday, with um, the, C the uh, inflation data, the CPI, coming in better than expected or less inflation than expected. Initially, that gave the futures pre-market a nice little charge, but then it kind of petered out throughout the day. So what could be happening right now is that maybe the market is digesting that a little bit. Uh, S&P is up 40 right now or just under 40 right now. Uh, so we have that happening. Uh, bonds, the 10 years relatively flat at this point. And then delving into the commodity space, Excuse me. We do have oil down slightly. Uh, we have natural gas down uh, eight cents, but that is four percent on natural gas. But that's kind of a normal move in natural gas. And uh, what do you know? Bitcoin's over thirty thousand, <laughs> and that's what I'm seeing today. Gotta love that flight to quality in crypto, Uncle Mike. Just, just driving it oh. ever higher. Oh boy. Also driving up the value of your domain, so you should be excited. And the higher Bitcoin goes, the more valuable your Bitcoin really sucks. Doc. And of course, let's go out now to the Flowmaster. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what is catching your eye out there in an interesting uh, second show of the week here? Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, like I said, I, well, I guess when I said it was kind of boring, I, I was looking at this low VIX, uh, or at least certainly, I think we're at three month lows uh, in the spot VIX. And, um, you know, kind of as, as Mike said, you know, realized Vol has actually been kind of tame. So, it's just things have settled down, you know, especially after that little banking, uh, I guess it was a banking scare at the beginning of uh, March that really seems to have passed because, you know, each week goes by that we don't have another banking implosion. People seem to to forget more that that was a risk. Uh, I think I mentioned in the last show, I am long some some uh, Anglo gold. And and you're right. The, anything gold related is is just on fire. And it's a little weird, right? If if inflation is actually tapering down and it kind of seems like the you know, tightening is working and, and rising interest rates are doing what they're supposed to, then you um, you wouldn't think that a, a gold or Bitcoin, you know, any of these things that actually, uh, you know, go up when the dollar's worth less, they wouldn't be going up. But Whatever, I, it, it feels a little bit frothy to me, you know, just kind of looking at, at kind of some of the things. When, when, when I hit movers on the TradeAlert platform and I see double digits in, a, in like the top 10 or 20 names, um, that's a kind of a nutty day. And that's what, a, that is what we're seeing. I mean, these three, four, five percent moves in, in the big names, right? Like, you know, we're talking, you know, Apple and Meta and, um, you know, some of the... Um, some of the big ones, I mean, Amazon's up 3.5% today. Apple's an interesting one, right? Because that got uh, got kind of pounded back down. It was below 160 a couple days ago, and now we're almost back to 165. So uh, there's a lot of, um, there's some interesting spots out there. Um, I've been playing around in some of these, you know, these little names that I think are kind of, you know, people are, are kind of punting both directions. So um, we'll get to that in, in the odd block. All right, quite a tease. Before I get away from your hot seat, Mr. Flowmaster, uh, the numbers officially came out here oh, almost a couple of weeks ago now, but see, all OCC puts them out late. But we've been talking for a while here on the network. Can we do it? Can we cross the 1B, the 1 billion volume number for a single month? Now, bear in mind, just a few years ago, listen, right before pre-pandemic, the entire options business did about 3.5 billion contracts in a year. So 1 billion contracts in a month, it seemed ridiculous to even say out loud. Yet we hit it last month, Mr. Flowmaster. March, over a billion contracts, the busiest month in the history of options, sir. What say you? I'm sure that milestone had to resonate with you when you're out there watching all the flow. 
Uh, it did, and I'm actually prepping slides for OIC, which is actually just in a few weeks. And um, as of the end of March, I think we're tracking for 11.6 billion contracts uh, on the year, which of course will be a new new record. And and you know we get a few you know rocking weeks, and we could see 12 billion uh, pretty easily. And I do believe I called the 10 billion number um, back before we topped that. So. My my record for predicting uh, new all time volume records in the options market is 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 really good. Although it only kind of goes one way. So did you have a one billion contract month coming soon? Did you have that on the radar? Uh, you know what that that one I didn't. But you know, like I said, if if it's it's very feasible, we get to twelve billion this year. So um, so that works. I would I would have I don't know if I would have predicted it for March. Yeah, March um, seems like an intriguing month to break that threshold on. I wouldn't have called that. Yeah, but part of it is, you know, all these short term options that are getting, you know, continuing to see growth and, and action and new listings um, that you get a lot of mileage out of those when it comes to volume. You know, it's and we spend a ton of time at SIBO looking at the zero day trading and these short term products because you know SPX was kind of the first one. But, you know, now they're out there in, in SPY and NASDAQ and a bunch of other indexes and you know, people that would trade a five lot in a three week option really do seem to be trading, a you know, three or four times that in the shorter dated stuff, you know, especially when they're trading spreads. But um, just a lot of flow in these in this short term that seems to be additive that that's really this year. That's where almost all the growth is coming from. A lot of growth. Stay tuned for Henry's state of the industry coming up in a few weeks down there at OIC. I know a lot of you aren't going to be able to attend OIC, but don't worry, we'll have it on the network. After the show, we are the exclusive content provider for all things OIC. After that, stay tuned for that. You'll be able to hear all the Flow Masters thoughts in detail coming up a little bit after the show. Instead, let's keep on rolling now. Let's see what's going on out there from a volume perspective. Remember, I said recently, listeners, some of these ADBs and some of these products they seem a little frothy, they seem a little top heavy. I'm not sure if we could sustain them. For example, on our last show, VIX was threatening 900,000 contracts a day. It was about 890 up there. That seemed borderline unsustainable for VIX, and that is kind of the case. It has come a little bit, a little bit back down to earth, but very aggressively so. Just since our last show, that ADB has cratered about 111,000 contracts. It's, it's still impressive. It's still 779,000 contracts, but it's a far cry from the 890 that it was just on our last show. So it takes a lot to maintain that much volume in VIX land. So uh, finally playing a little bit of catch up, even though it does seem like we're maybe going to hit that today. 631,000 contracts already on the tape for VIX. So that 779 certainly seems doable. Maybe we'll be heading back up in the other way, listeners, on our next show on Monday. Spy right around four and a half million right now. The ADB about eight and three quarters million has come in a little bit as well. SPX 1.35 million, exactly halfway to its ADV, which is also coming a little bit. It was around 2.9 million. Now it's down to about 2.7 million out there. So 1.35, exactly halfway. Uh, small caps, IWM, 388,000 contracts. ADV out there, 1.2 million. So that ADV has not come in. Small caps still rocking and rolling. If anything, it has increased, which is terrifying. And then uh, the Qs, 1.7 million. The ADV, 3.1 million out there. So Qs also on track to put up some numbers today. Let's go out to single names. Let's see if that is the land that time has forgot today. And the answer is kind of 204,000 contracts is what it takes to break into our top 10 today. I get you to Delta Airlines. We haven't talked about the airlines in a little while now, listeners. You know, in the heady days of the pandemic, United Airlines, Delta Airlines, these were all over the place. American seemed like people were loading up on paper that American was going to go out of business. There was a ton of put paper in American out there. Then we saw some call paloozas. So, it was intriguing times for the airlines for a while. Not so much lately, but Delta making it into our top 10 today. 204,000 contracts off about a third of a buck trading 3340 right now. So it was like they put out their numbers. That's what's, that's what's driving all this. So yeah, we're starting to come back into it, listeners. Earning season back on the docket. We usually mark the official kickoff with the financials on Friday, which is tomorrow. So if you're Excited for some new updated earnings season and earnings trade reports. We got them all for you. They're coming at you hot and heavy. So stay tuned for that throughout the season. A number nine chip zone coming early listeners. AMD 207,000 contracts. AMD off a whopping eight cents trading 92 and a quarter right now. 
Let's see. Good for, again, 207,000 contracts on the tape. And the number nine spot, number eight, it seems like it's perennial in this 987 range these days. It's Microsoft up four and a half dollars. I mean, this thing is just crazy lately. Uh, that's about 1.6% trading 288 even right now. What is 52 week high? 52 week high is 294.18. So they are within spitting. They can do that in another session at this point. So they are threatening all time highs here, at least 52 week highs. Actually, you got to go back. 331 is the all time high back in October of 21. So not quite at that level, but not that far away anymore, listeners. Again, good for number eight, 227,000 contracts. Number seven, another frequent offender lately, last couple of weeks. This is AMC, 241,000 contracts on the tape for number seven. It's trading 553, up about 20 cents out there. So this has been on the radar for a while. We're seeing some, some rumors of all sorts of fun out there in AMC lately, driving a lot of paper. Again, good for 241,000 contracts today. Then we go to number six. Again, talking about where we are with crypto these days. Marathon back on our radar. Listen, again, it's like, forget 2011. It's like 2021 again with some of these names we're talking about here. Mara. 244,000 contracts. Mara on the rampage today, trading 11 and a half bucks up one and a half dollars or 15.3%. Man, Mara, just, uh, I know Bitcoin's rally and that's carrying a lot of crypto names north, but Mara is popping hard today. Are you back in on Mara listeners? Are you more maybe out into, let's say your biddos? I know a lot of you like to sling biddo out there maybe you're into spot crypto don't tell uncle mike i'm not sure what is your preferred vector for getting some of this crypto action because this stuff is moving moving again today mara back on our top 10 after taking quite the extended hiatus out there then let's go back to one of our usual suspects listeners it is meta trading 219 right now up about five bucks again today that's all that no 200 call guy had to do was just hold the line until april and he would have been good if you want to hear the full story of that guy, listeners, check out Options Oddities. We kind of broke it down, did some sleuthing for you on what happened to that person after he got run over for size on the Nov 200s. It's an interesting story. Uh, Meta, good for 315,000 contracts today, listeners, and the number five overall spot. A number four, staying in the chip zone. It's NVIDIA, 519,000 contracts. NVIDIA, 267 and a half, up about two and a half bucks today. Let's see. They're closing in on their 52 week high as well. That's 280 even. They're at 267 and a half. So not that far away from it. And a far cry from their 52 week low of 108. So this whole uh, AI tsunami has just lifted all these names, including NVIDIA. And of course, other things driving NVIDIA as well. The, the massive chip rally of late, all sorts of fun driving into this, uh, these crazy levels out here we're at. Speaking of crazy levels, let's see what our top three is looking like today. Let's go out to Amazon first. Amazon number three, 630,000 contracts on the tape. So decent, kind of light for number three, but not bad. Uh, trading 101 and a half, up three and a half bucks today. So a nice pop for the Amazonians out here. And then number two, we just talked about it a bunch of times. Everyone brought it up. It's Apple. It's a day that ends in Y, and Apple is up hard, so the market is happy today. Apple up 440 right now, trading 164 and a half. 52 week high listeners, 176.15. Doesn't seem that long ago we were hanging out at the 52-week low of 124.17, yet here we are 40 handles and change north of that now, listeners. But kind of a light day on the volume front, only 696,000 contracts, so not a ton of Apple volume going up. In fact, a light day across the board because our number one, of course, it's Tesla, but usually we see it pushing 2 million contracts right now. It's right about half that. It's 1.08 million contracts right now, even though it is popping hard today, up 4.5 bucks as well, or 2.5%. Trading 185.10 right now. So a Tesla day that ends in Y. It's rocking and rolling all over the place. This time, catching that NASDAQ wave to the upside. As the Rock Lobster alluded, we do have earnings popping off tomorrow with Citi and Wells Fargo and PNC and everybody else. A lot of the big names popping off. Of course, we had Delta before the bell today, hence the, the pop on them, hence why they're in our top 10 today. So... We are starting to get back in it, listeners. So if you like those reports, we're going to have all that stuff updated for you there on the old website, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey to the dark side. Let's see, where did we settle out? As a result of our last season being kind of effervescent, our long-term average now has gone up from a 92% to a 96%. So we are closing in on having 
earnings season effectively be a one for one trade. So what they're pricing in is exactly what we get in terms of movement. Not quite there yet. Remember the pandemic listeners just annihilated all earnings ball. Took a while for that to come back, but now it seems like it's finally starting to come back. And now it seems like it's finally time for the odd block. So let's get to it. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, it is time to get weird. It is time to get wild. It is time for the odd block. And it's Thursday. So, you know, the Flowmaster is joining us, which means extra fun, extra weirdness, extra wildness on the old odd block. So, Mr. Flowmaster, we fired up our eye of Sauron. We found some interesting nuggets, but you always come armed with some interesting nuggets of your own. So what's your first name that has come across the eye of the Flowmaster today? I got one that just showed up. I've never even heard of this Ooh, one before. Zyme. Breaking. breaking. I love it. Right. Breaking bre- breaking flow. <laughs> For anybody that's listening live, this might be tradable. So Zyme works. Z-Y-M-E is the symbol. I think it's a drug stock. And volume is seven is uh, nine times normal. And the trade that just hit uh, about a second ago was a buyer of 1,000 of the May 12 and a half calls for 30 cents. And this is a $10 stock. So and it was a nine dollar stock uh, yesterday. So uh, one thing I'll say about you know unusual flow, and I, I you know you got to put the regular disclaimers on things, which is do your homework. You know nothing that I'm saying is a recommendation. However, when the market is kind of frothy and a lot of people are kind of looking for hot activity and they're not so concerned about the big macro effects, which kind of seems to be where we are right now, uh, that's kind of to me when some of these hot names are uh worth playing so um it looks like on the day a total of about um uh, a couple thousand of these calls have traded um also the um the april 12 and a half calls it's all buying so that's one that to kind of keep an eye on and then the other one that i've been playing around in, in that, that's got some interesting option flow is tupperware uh, they actually, that stock got killed on Monday. <laughs> right, hold, wait, 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 let me break down a little Zyme oh. first for our folks. Okay. Then we'll get Sorry. into it. So you're, you're bringing the newcomers. I like it. I like when you bring the heat here, sir. <laughs> Breaking flow. I love that. So we have the flow master joining us today. This is a newcomer. Listen, this is Zyme works. Like you said, ink ticker symbol Zyme. This is a, uh, Vancouver, BC biotech company. Uh, they do protein therapeutics for treatment of cancer and autoimmune diseases. Trading 10 bucks right now, up about two-thirds of a point or about 66 cents just in the last day. On the year, let's see, probably a rock'em, sock'em year if it is a biotech. And yeah, a year ago, it was trading six and a quarter. Then they crushed it down to 486 and then it rallied it again in May to 715. So it did a lot of living just in the span of a month. Like any good biotech, looks like they crushed it to its low for the year of about 411. That was back in September. And ever since then, it's been on the rampage. They rallied it up to eight and a half in November, then back down to six bucks even in December, then up to 10.04 in January as a kickoff the year at a high. Then they came for it again and got back down to about 7.90 just a couple of weeks ago in March. And then they have rallied it from 7.90 all the way up to where it is right now, 10.05 again. So did a lot of living out there, listeners. And as the Flowmaster mentioned, we got the uh, May 12 halves going up for 30 cents here, 1,024 times on good old Zyme, if I can get my, uh, there we go, get my Flowmaster machine working. There we go. Yeah, about 1,200 of these bad boys have gone up today. So May 12 halves. Listen, there's somebody looking for a little bit of upside. I love it, Mr. Flowmaster. Break and flow. What else you got for us, sir? Mm. Well, so the other one I was I was mentioning is Tupperware, which is uh, is a $2 stock now. Well, no, it's $1.60 now. It was a two and a half dollar stock a week ago. They had a they had some bad news come out, some some concern about internal controls and missing some exchange filings, which is always scary. And the stock went down about fifty percent. And since then, it's kind of started to to uh, kind of waffle around the the buck half to to two dollar range. And uh, like I said, I, I think that people like to play around in these names. You know, might be maybe it's a little bit of a hot potato. 
Uh, but you know, stocks can only go to zero. Right. And so people do start to kind of dig around in these cheap, low priced stocks, uh, thinking they have some upside, uh, you know, in terms of a short squeeze or, you know, some sort of a bailout or something. So that one, I actually, um, the, the, the contract that I've been looking at today is the, um, the April two calls that are, that are trading around 15 to 20 cents, 18,000 of them so far and on a dollar 67 stock, right? So this, these things expire in a week, a week from tomorrow. And, um, I kind of like that buy right, you know, buying the stock for a buck 67 and with price improvements, sometimes you get filled around 19 cents on these, which is actually my pet peeve of the day is the inconsistency that sometimes comes out of the auction process with the stock at a dollar 67. I got a 19 cent fill selling a couple calls and I said, Oh, that's a pretty good price. I'll sell two more. And then I got a 15 cent fill <laughs> and I was like, you know, that, that inconsistency and I know how the market works intimately and it's a very uncomfortable feeling where you just qu don't quite know, you know, that's a 20% difference in price. And so it bugs me. Um, you got the two lot that was hanging out in the books, sir. They were just for you. I, I know it was a, it, maybe it was a <laughs> hidden iceberg order. That snapped me up, but um, unfortunately they only wanted two. They didn't want another two. I like that. I have a new segment, Henry's Pet Peeve of the Week. <laughs> and Mr. Flowmaster, we have to, or excuse me, Mr. Flowmaster, Mr. Rock Lobster, we have talked about Tupperware before on Options Oddities, ticker symbol TUP, listeners, T-U-P. As the Flowmaster mentioned, a kind of a rough year for them, trading buck sixty-eight right now. A year ago, was trading $20.15. Uh, they have sold off $18.44, or 91.5% on the year, listeners, so... Yeah, a rough year for Tupperware. We were just joking on, I think, on Options Oddities. Does people do people still go to Tupperware parties? Is that still a thing? Uh, where, there's a parent company for this, I think, too, that we were talking about flow on. Uh, but yeah, they had a rough time. They have delinquent filings and some issues with internal controls. Never, never something you want to see. Looks like they really came for it about almost a year ago, late April. It was trading 17 and a half, almost 18 bucks. And then right at the beginning of May, they came for it. It got down to 680 by May 12th. So in the span of a couple of weeks, it dropped from 18 down to about six bucks. And it's been, they tried to rally it in August when everything else rallied up to 12 and a half bucks again. And then that was all she wrote. It ran out of steam from there. It's been pretty much trending straight south ever since. So interesting. Mr. Flowmaster, I keep saying that. Mr. Rock Lobster, A, what are your thoughts on these Tupperware? What was that other brand we were talking about that was kind of the parent company? Because we were joking about the parent company party. And then B, what are your thoughts on these calls and this buy right, sir? Well, I was I was just trying to think too on, um, I, I I know maybe Henry has something. But why do you? I guess you know why do you bother buy writing it? I guess I guess for the yield, <laughs> it's kind of a uh, a goofy one. Um, another thing is I understand Tupperware parties, but don't people still buy Tupperware like plastic stuff to put food in, or people just stop? <laughs> cooking i or they don't have leftovers anymore i find all this like tupperware has been around for like a hundred years so it's kind of odd that it was i think it was like a 40 dollar stock a couple years ago so i'm i'm shaking my head in total confusion there on on tupperware but i mean for a buy right um I don't know. I guess, you know, Alex would be freaking out. You know, you just buy the $1.67 stock and see if it survives through bankruptcy or something. Um, but this is another one. You you would think somebody would want to scoop up the assets for the, the value of the name and everything else. But uh, but it's just, wow. Uh, this uh, like kind of an old-fashioned industrial company just disappeared. So I, I guess you can do a buy right but for yield. But I, I don't see the purpose. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that, that's kind of where I am on that one. Oh, he's crapping on your trade, Mr. Flowmaster. He's not liking your, uh, your 19 cent two lot. He says that's, uh, that's, uh, that's garbage is what. That's read between the lines there. That's what he says there. Shots it's fired. His own. <laughs> Shots fired there from, from the Rock Lobster to the Flowmaster. We were talking about shiny stuff. Let's get out of here on this one. It's kind of a palooza. We got a double whammy. That's what I was joking about, Mr. Mr. Uncle Mike, earlier. Your shiny stuff is... Is kind of all the rage. How many times, listeners, have we been talking about people loading up on calls 
on and pretty far out of the money calls on cheapy gold names. First, let's go out. This one's actually not as cheap. It's not a dollar anymore. But this is El Dorado Gold, ticker symbol Ego, trading 11 and a half bucks today, up about a quarter. Uh, we saw about 15,000 of the Ox 16s go up. By the way, 52 week high for this one is 12 and a half bucks. And looks like it hit it a year ago. So it's been in the doldrums ever since. So loading up on the Ox 16s for 56 cents, 15,000 times this morning, listeners. The stock was right around here when they did it. Uh, earnings first one is on April 27th. So they got some earnings announcements baked in there. But 16 handle is is pretty aggressive. So Mr. Rock Lobster, what do you think of these? I think you also spotted some of your own gold calls today which i know you want to say for oddities we could touch on them here too kind of a a gold double whammy sir what'd you find i, I don't think there's any shortage on these yeah I, it's, I, it's, I didn't know I, that was that i don't know if there, i've ever seen a time where i've seen so much unidirectional paper in one sector it's kind of weird yeah well it's i i think there's a again i didn't know i was just dissing to henry's uh buy right but it, I'll give him that it's interesting. It was 15 cents over, right? It's, <laughs> it's interesting. He's trying to dial know, it back now, Mr. Flowmaster. <laughs> yes. I, After I he crapped all over your 19 cent buy right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Ever since Henry decided to give me the link to the, like the best trades from Trade Alert. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, you're, jeopardizing, you're jeopardizing your trade of the day email when you say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I think this is the weird, odd thing about this is like this paper doesn't even look crazy anymore because so much of it is going up. Like in all the metals, the metal stocks, um, everywhere, just they're just buying crazy upside. And you know, you, you look at the news and you look through uh, Twitter, of course, of trying to look through Twitter. Uh, you know, I like it as a news feed, but everyone, you know, there's a lot of crazy on Twitter, but. A lot, of, a lot of nations are like, well, we don't need the U.S. We don't need the dollar, or like so, you know. And I, I would, I would guess um, that if you're not buying dollars, you're going to buy something else. Okay, the euro. Uh, I don't know if you really want that, but some people might. Um, and then uh, there's gold. There's gold and silver as as an alternative. So. And I think, you know, you start piling into gold all of a sudden, and that becomes, you know, if people are ditching the dollar and buying gold, that's that's a huge <laughs> flow of money. That's almost an unbelievable flow of money. Um, so I, I I think and, and none of those, I haven't seen a good headline in months on this subject. Um, so I like ever since they froze all the Russian dollars, I guess, made it, you know, like everybody's like, oh, wait a minute here. This might not work out so good for us. So I think there might be some unintended consequences. And part of it is folks are just buying crazy upside in gold. I mean, you can find a way to fund or finance uh, these uh, these upside calls. But I, I think it's, it's just it's been such a steady amount of paper for the last, I, I would say, three or four weeks. And like you can look at the day they announced QE for the banks. And look at the charts of gold and GDX, GDXJ, silver, all of them. Like silver was a little late to the party, but the gold miners just definitely flew right away. Um, and I, I, you know, it's again, you, you, my views on all of this Fed intervention are are known here already. But um, you're, this is, I think people are looking for an alternative. If if they don't actually do it. The fact that they're threatening it means they don't like what's going on very much. So um, that's a that is maybe a very uh, roundabout way to answer that. Yeah, somebody's buying these upside calls. <laughs> there's a ton of those. I'm looking at your GDX now. You may have to save this for oddities tomorrow because there's a lot of legs to this. It's more than just yeah. This. It's it's madness. It's, it's a madness. lot of stuff. It's a whole. It's like yeah. six legs on this thing, and it's a hundred thousand contracts. So stay tuned for options oddities tomorrow, listeners. We'll break down this uh, GDX multi-leg uh, vertical in, in a more detail but mr Flowmaster, first off if you want to come to the defense of your buy right have at it throw some shade back at the rock lobster and then b what are your thoughts on these uh these ego ox 16 sir well if he doesn't like the two for 20 cents what about the three for nickel he, <laughs> he's gonna love those he's all over those the uh i i get where you're coming from and obviously it's just like a it's a synthetic put on a stock that uh seems imperiled but um 
I'm trying it. So I'll, I'll tell you how it turns out. Um, and um, the funny thing is after whining about my 15 cent fill fault, which came after my 19 cent fill, I just sold a couple for a quarter. So it's a weird, Whoa, all over weird, the place. <laughs> it, it's all over the place. And that's, I guess that's what makes it kind of fun to trade. Um, these gold names and the upside, I, I, I see it. I agree. I'm, I, it's slightly baffling to me because that usually does well when there's a lot of fear and concern, right? I mean, gold calls are the, kind of the same as, you know, SPX puts when the shit hits the fan. So um, to see them coming for those when the, mark, you know, when the broad market seems kind of stable is a little weird. Uh, and I don't know what to I don't, I don't know what to say on it. Um, I don't know what to say on it. It's 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 just an interesting one. I mean, I think that you know the theme over the last you know really most of this year has been a, a pretty interesting shakeup across different sectors and stuff. You know, real a real noticeable kind of asset you know reallocation of capital. Uh, you know, quickly out of the banks, <laughs> and then now they seem to be coming back into the banks and. Um, uh, and back into some of the tech names. So uh, I think it's just kind of uh, part of, you know, part of that kind of strategic reallocation of capital. And uh, people are people are happy to kind of put it into some of these commodities and, and especially gold. All right. You mentioned the banks. That's all coming up on the earnings tomorrow. So I think it's a good time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. As I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, earnings season official, proper, as the Brits like to say, popping off tomorrow. We had some, obviously, today with Delta Airlines for the bell, but really... The financials do tend to mark the official start of earnings season. So if you've been missing it, if you've been missing a little bit of earnings juice, you know, the dregs of the season, not enough to hold you over, well, then don't worry. We're coming back at you hot and heavy with some big names in the financials tomorrow. And then, of course, it's on from there, listeners. So stay tuned to theoptionsinsider.com. We'll have all of the latest reports for your earnings trading convenience out there. And speaking of convenience, he's all about your convenience. Let him handle your accounts for you. You can just go out and have your own fun out there, listeners. He's, of course, Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until our Monday show? Well, uh, for the rest of the day, anyway, I'm keeping an eye on the forty, the Jovanazzi 4100 magnet on the SPX to see if uh, that gets broken. Uh, also keeping an eye on the 10-year, seeing if uh, we sell off in that. It's been uh shockingly quiet after cpi uh so it was loud at first but then it's just kind of puttering off a little bit it's kind of in the meh mode so watching that i'll be watching uh earnings coming up as the season goes on and um excited for the coming weeks in the markets we might actually get to talk about things other than the fed maybe i don't think that's possible i, don't, I think it's in our contract we are legally obligated to discuss not but the Fed and silver, Mr. Uncle Mike. So, <laughs> so there you go. I should mention, by the way, coming at the end of the show, we are seeing the rally continuing a little bit right around 4140 now. So continuing to move away. I thought maybe we'd get that snap back we've gotten lately, but at least so far, not the case, continuing to rally out there in most of the major indices. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of the week, sir? Yeah, some of these earnings will be, um, you know, we're going to get into some good stuff. Um so I'll be watching that uh, and the financials, you know, some of the like, like I think I mentioned last week, uh, FHN, which is supposed to be in a deal with TD. Uh, and then there was but it's trading way below the deal price uh, that had a had a decent bounce back, I guess, on some comments from uh, from TD about the acquisition. And then some of these other, you know, First Republic, some of these financials that really uh, you know, dropped about 70%. And then they've kind of stabilized. Now, whether or not they're going to bounce back, I, I think most people are, are are saying not anytime soon. But um, but if they're not, and they're just going to kind of hang out, then, you know, possibly looking at a, at a wheel strategy on those. And then lastly, uh, watching these, this short-term, this zero-day flow. In SPX today, it's about 53% of the contracts to expire today. 53%. So it's a rare, it's actually... Average is around 48% over the last few months. So um, a day like today is, is a little bit 
heavier than normal on that short-term flow. You have to do a little bit of a guesstimate. What is your guesstimate for this time next year when you're doing your state of the industry? What percent is SPX up to? Or is it a flash in the pan? Is it back down to like 22% or something? Well, by this time next year, we'll be talking about the the midday options. Yeah, with zero day <laughs> Apple and the intra day options. Yeah, you're right. That's that's a hourly scary, scary, scary prospect. <laughs> now I've scared myself. Instead, let's go on to the Rock Lobster, Mister Rock Lobster. What are you keeping an eye on till our next show on Monday, sir? <laughs> the hourlies. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. I like that one. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put a buy them at this point. Um, uh, although I did predict that we are going to see uh, we're going to see a cash settled like Apple, Google, Tesla. And I'd say within a within a year, as long I guess if the OCC can clear, but I don't think that should be too big of a deal. Um, but it, it, it's, there's no way it doesn't happen at this point. Um, uh, oh, we will get bank earnings, and if you know, and everybody's like, okay, these banks are going like so. J.P. Morgan, uh, City, Wells Fargo, uh, I think it's Wells. I'm pretty sure, but it's like it's some big banks. Um, Bank America, I think, is so okay. Are they making money, losing money? Like, what's the deal? So, um, I I think that we're gonna get a pretty good uh, twist of twist of the wind, I guess, um, when all that happens. So I'm I'm looking to see if there's any actual positive earnings out of all this uh, rate rising, which you know apparently it wasn't supposed to work like that. So that's why I'm I'm confused on what's going on. But we'll see. All right, listeners, we will see. We will see what is in store for all of us post haste. Unfortunately, that music means we won't see any more show, at least for this one today. But if you're looking forward to a little bit more show, don't worry. Stay tuned. I'll be joined in a little bit by our old buddy, Mr. Eric Norland, one of the head economists and researchers over there at CME Group. And we haven't talked to him in nearly two years. Can't believe it's been that long. So he's always got some fascinating research up his sleeve and i just looked over what he's got now and he's got some crazy stuff in store for us again today so stay tuned for that if you're listening to live i'll be back in a little bit with eric live of course if you're listening after the fact just hit next on whatever device you're listening to this on and it should be waiting there for you but before we do that let's go around the horn again let's start with the flow master mr flow master sir if folks want to check out all this goodness for themselves and they want to get alerted to some trades maybe they want to check out some dubious buy rights where should they go what should they do TradeAlert.com. Uh, feel free to shoot us a note at the bottom. There's a contact form. You can request a free trial, and we are happy to help you out. There you go. It's easy. TradeAlert.com is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. And if you like all the stuff we're talking about here on the show, listeners, we're really just scratching the surface. There is a lot of cool stuff. In fact, every time I love when he joins us on the show every week because there's always new buttons popping up on my trade. I got to play around with all these new buttons he keeps adding in here to see what the heck they do. I haven't even messed around with the Big Delta since the last time we chatted, Mr. Henry. So I got, I got a lot of digging to do. Or my, my new favorite, the Big Ditta, as it looks like on my screen here. So uh, <laughs> good stuff here. TradeAlert.com, listeners, is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. Hey, hit them up. Take advantage of that free trial. I think you're going to like what you see. Let's go around the horn. Speaking of liking it, I think most people like Uncle Mike. He's a pretty inoffensive guy. Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks want to reach out to you, take advantage of your many and varied services. Where should they go? What should they do? Ah, well, go, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W, uh, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, if you're looking for a financial advisor who understands the option product. And um, I like that nickname for you, Mark, the Big Delta. The Big Delta. There we go. I have many nicknames. The Big Delta is just one. Call up Uncle Mike so he can lead you through the world of crypto by the hand, because he loves it. He loves himself some crypto. If you want a guy to help you buy crypto, Uncle Mike is the place to go. StCharlesWealth.com is the place to begin your crypto journey. He's going to hate me saying that. And, of course, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. I'm not sure if you're the place to go to begin their crypto journey, but if they want to begin their options or volatility journey, where should they go? What should they do? We'll come to OptionPit.com uh, or Money Map Press. Um, uh, and uh, check out all the goodies that we have. If you're at Option Pit and you heard the show, you get 10% off 888-TRADE-01. So give Ted or Andrew a call. And uh, if you want to learn how to use all this volatility stuff, how to help it hedge a portfolio, how it works, hell, heck, how, figure it out how it works. Um, so you can 
analyze and understand what other people are doing, as well as yourself, uh, go to optionpit.com. You want him to crap all over your buy rights as well. Optionpit.com <laughs> is the place to go <laughs> to begin your journey. That's going to do it for us here on the OB. Back again in a little bit with Twifo, with my buddy, Mr. Eric from CME. All sorts of crazy research. Should be good. Back again tomorrow on Vol Views. I got word that the once and future Dr. Vicks will be joining us again out there. So look forward to all that fun. NASDAQ folks do seem to like uh, Mr. Dr. Vicks. And then after that, for all you pro folks, we're going to get into all this madness with the gold calls and everything else in much more detail over there on Options Oddities. Then back again next week, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.